the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends where life goes on. There's one more thing, gentlemen. I want to be told the facts. All the facts. Well, we seldom deal in imaginative flights of fancy here at Blair Hospital, Mr. Bradley. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Gillespie. I mean, I don't want the picture colored. I want the truth. In other words, you're afraid you may be in bad shape, and if so, you want to know about it. Is that it? Dr. Kildare, I believe that whether you're building a $5 million bridge or buying a nickel cigar... You can't make a logical decision unless you first have all the pertinent facts. And any time you try to dodge a fact, you're only handicapping yourself. That's a good theory. Happens to work in medicine as well as engineering. Well, Dr. Gillespie, since you're the diagnostician, maybe... No, 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 go ahead, Jimmy. Now, we're in full agreement on this case. Mm -hmm. Well, then, let's look at some of the facts that brought you here last night, Mr. Bradley. Let's see. You arrived on a plane from Mexico City, went straight into a six-hour conference with your board of directors, took a taxi home at midnight ran up the steps of your apartment, and collapsed. Those, of course, are obvious facts. Go on. Well, behind them is another very important fact. You are 54 years old. Therefore, your heart is 54 years old. Well, that would seem obvious, too. Obvious, yes. But it's the most important fact of all, Mr. Bradley. That heart of yours has been working away steadily without a single pause 54 years, pumping 4,000 gallons of blood a day. Now, add it up. That's quite a job, especially for a machine that's never needed any repairs. There's the point. You see, to some extent, the heart does repair itself, but there are some cumulative changes with increasing age that can't be repaired. Mainly, they involve the coronary arteries that furnish the blood supply to the heart muscle itself. What kind of changes? Well, they're involved with the process of atherosclerosis, uh, hardening of the arteries. The walls of the arteries thicken and limit the flow of blood. Under ordinary conditions, there are no symptoms, but overexert get worked up emotionally, and angina. Sharp pain in the chest, shooting down the left arm. And that means what? Your heart's worn out? You're done for? Oh, ridiculous. Why, well, I've had hardening of the arteries for 25 years, Mr. Bradley. An attack like this one of yours is merely a warning that you've got to slow down and take it easier. Quit your job and rest for a while. Avoid emotional... Oh, that's dis- impossible. Impossible? Why? Well, I, uh, I'm nearly finished with the biggest job I've ever done an irrigation project in central Mexico. My stockholders are expecting completion on the specified date. Several thousand farmers down there, depending on the water. I'll take it as easy as possible, gentlemen, but I can't quit. Keep on at your present pace, and you'll be back here within three months. Dr. Kildare, when I promise something, I deliver it. In three months, the job will be finished. Well, giving you the facts apparently hasn't done any good. You're making the wrong decision in spite of them. At least I'm able to figure my chances. So I know what I'm doing. In this case, Mr. Bradley, I'm afraid you don't know. Confound it. If you're 
lay something down for five minutes around here, disappears. Sometimes it's uncanny. What are you mumbling about? I'm not mumbling. I'm merely trying to find out what happened to a highly important package that came in the mail this morning. Well, there wasn't any package in the mail, except an old seed catalog of some kind. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. I threw it out. What? What on earth do you want with a seed catalog? Oh, that's my business. Wait a minute. It's not that same old stuff about retiring. A little farm in Vermont with chrysanthemums and delphiniums and daffodils. Daffodils. Parker... You know just as much about horticulture as you know about nursing. Nothing. Oh, I know what's wrong with you. What is wrong with him, Parker? Oh, morning, Jimmy. Dr. Kildare, he's talking about retiring and snarling at everybody around here. No. Simply because he hasn't had an interesting case in nearly a week. Oh, I know. Ah, oh, she's out of her mind. Well, if she happens to be right, I may have a cure for you. A wayman's bringing an emergency patient from the airport. Be here in a few minutes. Oh? You know anything about the case, Jimmy? Only that the patient's name is Bradley, and it's a heart attack again. Bradley? Oh, by the great horn spoon. You know, we were wrong. It only took one month. You were right, gentlemen. And I was wrong. Well, the construction job's near enough done now, so it doesn't need pushing. It was quite a gamble, Mr. Bradley. Your life against the completion of a job. I've always kept my promises, Dr. Kildare. Anyway, I won the gamble. Well, no, that still remains to be seen. Hmm? A coronary thrombosis, when it isn't fatal, sometimes leaves the heart permanently damaged. I see. This coronary thrombosis, exactly what is it? Well, it involves those diseased coronary arteries I told you about before. For some reason, we don't know, a blood clot forms in one of the constricted spots and blocks off the blood supply to a part of the heart muscle. Result? Heart attack. Felt pretty much like the other attack, the one you called angina pectoris. Well, they're a lot alike, but a thrombosis is more serious. In some cases, yours, for instance, there's enough collateral circulation to keep the heart going on short rations until the thrombus is eliminated. But can't anything be done to prevent it? Yes, it can. Yep. Anybody who was warned by a mild attack of angina can have sense enough to change his way of life. Slow down. Take it easy. All right, Dr. Gillespie. I'm ready now to buy that advice. Come in. Oh, hello, Diana. Hello. Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Mr. Bradley, this is Miss Verner. Hello, Mr. How do you do? Uh, she'll be your nurse during the various tests we're going to make. Well, what have I done to deserve the prettiest nurse in the hospital? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, easy now, Mr. Bradley. You've got a heart condition, you know. <laughs> All right, Dr. Kildare. And anyway, I saw that look she gave you. Hmm? Well, I... Dr. Kildare, I came to let you know the electrocardiograph is set up whenever you're ready. Good. We're ready now. Will you send for an orderly? Of course. Right away. Electrocardiograph. Sounds complicated. It is complicated, Mr. Bradley, but it's one very good way of getting some facts. You sure that machine's working all right? I don't feel a thing. No, you shouldn't. I think you better step it up a little, Jimmy. It's only touching seven. All right, Doctor. <laughs> Maybe I'm short-circuited somewhere. It eh, could be. <laughs> it may blow a fuse any minute. Diana, are you ready with those hypos? Yes, Doctor. More shots? What are they for this time? Oh, just to test your heart response to a couple of drugs. Gives us a few more facts. And what are those two drugs I'm taking now? This dicumarol? What's the other one? Quinine sulfate? Uh, quinidine sulfate. Hmm. Now, the dicumarol tends to keep the blood liquefied. Helps dissolve that thrombus and reduces the danger of an embolus. Quinidine sulfate's a big help in the prevention of ventricular fibrillation. The heart beating out of rhythm and ceasing to function as a pump. Jimmy, I think we got enough control film now. Let's try the digitalis. Right. Uh, Diana, first hypo. Yes, Doctor? What have you found out so far, Dr. Gillespie? Well, we won't know until we go over the charts later. This is all being recorded on photographic film. Mm, I see. <laughs> Guess I was expecting something more spectacular. Yeah, you'll get it with the next test, phonocardiograph. Phonocardiograph? Yeah, it picks up your heartbeat and amplifies it electrically. It's quite a sound, Mr. Bradley. It may scare you right into a relapse. <laughs> Oh, 
there's an irregular slur on the recovery beat, Dr. Gillespie. Notice it? Yes, I did, Jimmy. Interesting. Well, what's that mean? Well, nothing, nothing by itself. Just another fact. You shouldn't talk, Mr. Bradley. She's quite right. In fact, for a few seconds, I want you to hold your breath. All right. Yeah, and yeah, there it is. I can't quite understand it, Jimmy. All right, Mr. Bradley, that's enough. Uh, how many more of these tests are you going to have to make? Oh, this is only the beginning. What's coming up next? Well, we've recorded your heart action. We've listened to it. I think it's time we took a look at it. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Oh, you can relax. We'll use a fluoroscope. We don't have to take it out to look at it. Be all right if I raise him up to a sitting position? Yeah, that's if he can get a better focus that way. Well, it's a better angle for the fluoroscope. Now, wait, Mr. Bradley. We'll raise the head of the stretcher. Sounds like the ratchet gear on the guillotine. Well, that's <laughs> a fine, morbid observation, Mr. Bradley. There, uh, how's that? Well, let's see now. I can put the screen across here. Now, yeah, that's fine, Dr. Kildare. Take a few seconds for the tube to warm up. Uh, Dr. Kildare, you said something about possible damage to my heart. Exactly what did you mean? Well, when the blood supply to some area of the heart muscle is temporarily interrupted, that area may die and be absorbed. Is replaced then by a scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And if the area is too large, it's just too bad. That it? Well, not necessarily. At all. all right, gentlemen. Anytime you're ready. And go ahead. Oh, here, Jimmy. Here, plenty of room. I'll move over a little. Thanks. Can you see all right, Doctor Gillespie? Yes, Jimmy. I can see all right. Well, I think you can cut the machine off now. That's all for the present. All right, Doctor. Well. That was quick enough. Mm, just one more fact, Mr. Bradley. Uh, Diana, you can have him taken back to his room now. All right. Well, what's the next step? Two of you get together and try to agree on some verdict? I guess that's about it. Well, Dr. Gillespie? Right with you, Jimmy. Well, I hope you reach a fast agreement. Everybody tells me the third attack is the one that's fatal. Just a superstition, Mr. Bradley. We'll look in on you later. You saw it, Jimmy, huh? Yes, bulging out a half inch or more with every heartbeat. That area is so thin you could poke your finger through it. And it'll get even thinner before it starts to heal. They break through any minute. I know. Well, he doesn't need to worry about a third attack. He hasn't got one chance in a hundred of living ten days. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Parker, don't stand there and tell me you don't know where he is. With that long nose of yours poking around through the corridors, you're bound to know. Well, I guess my nose is quite normal, thank you. Well, would be. On an anteater. Oh, Kildare hasn't left the hot. Therefore, he's in the hospital. Somewhere. But where? Well, how do you expect me to know? Oh, shut up, Parker. I'm talking to myself. Well. It's too bad you can't do some useful snooping once in a while instead of... Still there. Dr. Gillespie? Parker? Hello. I've been looking all over the hospital for you. Oh? Well, I was up in the library file room reading case histories. Something on your mind? Yes. Bradley. I've thought of one possibility that might save him. My dear Dr. G, so have I. Ah? Uh, what's yours? No, 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 you first, Jimmy. Well, 
The Beck operation. Huh. Opening his chest, grafting a fascia over the weak area of the heart muscle. Hey, pretty dangerous, Jimmy. As it now stands, he has practically no chance. Well, the wall may hold out and heal by itself. You know it won't. Well, it does happen sometimes. If this were four or five days from now, maybe. But his heart's going to get worse before it even starts to heal. Yeah, I know. But nevertheless, Jimmy... I've gone through every case history in the library dealing with these so-called heart aneurysms, and you know the chances involved both ways. You've never performed a back operation. It's no tougher than a patent ductus, and I've had fair luck with those. Yes, you have. I don't see any other possibility, Dr. Gillespie. It's the only way. Let's go and talk to Mr. Bradley. All right, gentlemen. I've survived the shock of learning that my heart is seriously damaged. Let's have the details. Facts. Well, I told you, Mr. Bradley, that the heart wall in one particular area is so thin it's bulging out every time your heart beats. It's like an automobile tire, Mr. Bradley, with the inner tube pushing out through a worn spot in the casing. The human heart kicks up a pretty fair head of pressure, you know. It'd have to to pump that 4,000 gallons a day you were talking about. Yes. All right. What's likely to happen? Roughly the same thing that might happen with that inner tube of Dr. Gillespie's. A little extra pressure or a spot of deteriorating rubber, and that's that. You said something about an operation, Dr. Kildare. Is this what you meant? That's right. It involves opening the chest cavity and working on the heart itself. Hmm. Grafting a kind of a patch over the weak spot to prevent a blowout and give the muscle a chance to heal itself. That sounds like a fairly rough deal. Oh, it's been performed successfully in, in many cases. And you're advising it in my case? Yes. Do you agree, Dr. Gillespie? I do. As far as I can see, there's only one thing to consider. Without the operation, you have about a 1% chance of pulling through. What chance with it? Well, very good. Exactly how good? Mm, better than 50-50. I see. You ever performed this operation before, Dr. Kildare? Um, no, I haven't. Is he a good surgeon, Dr. Gillespie? During 35 years in the profession, I have never seen a better one. Well, for 20 years, I run a successful engineering firm on the policy of always hiring the best man for the job. And 50-50 is a fair enough bet. Let's get started. I've scheduled up rating theater number six for 9.15, Dr. Kildare. It was the best I could do on such short notice. Six is fine, Parker, thanks. Now, what about personnel? Diana Verner will stand in as surgical nurse. I'd like you to handle the pre-med. All right. Anything special on it? No, standard. Still haven't heard about Ramsey, but I... Ramsey's assigned. I just okayed him. Oh, thanks. Uh, here are the lab reports. Bradley's general physical condition is excellent. So how do you feel? I'll be all right. Kildare speaking. This is Ramsey, Doc. I understand we got a job of work to do. Yeah, kind of a tough one. So I hear. What do you plan to use? Maybe on the table a long time, so we'd better play it safe. Cyclopropane, plenty of oxygen. 2080? We'll start with that. Okay. 915 and 6, huh? Right. Bye. Well, I guess that's that. Well, apparently the next step is to operate. Doctor. I won't need these other clamps, Miss Werner. Very well, Doctor. Uh, short forceps, please. Here you are. Amazing vitality. The muscle tone is marvelous. Sponge, please. Yes, Doctor. Pulse 63. Uh, what oxygen balance are you using now? Still 80-20. Go ahead. Sponge, please. Thanks. You still dripping plasma? Yes, Doctor. Good. Better give that second hypo now. Pulse 63. I think we can dispense with that pulse reading. Oh? I'm holding his heart here in my hands. Mm. 
Miss Parker speaking. Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Kildare's still in surgery. Who's it? Yes, I know it's been over four hours, but nevertheless, Dr. Kildare's still in surgery. Goodbye. They act like it's my fault. Who does? Oh, the front office. They've got some reports or something for him to sign. Ah, they've always got some reports. Four hours. Confounded, Parker. Are you sure he's still in surgery? Now I get it from you. Anybody would think I was operating on Mr. Bradley. Well, I wish nobody was. Dr. Kildare knows what he's doing. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? A hundred things could go wrong. Name one. He could be cursed with having a nurse without a brain in her head. Well, that's gratitude for all the years I've given you. Who's winning? Oh, Jimmy. One of the comforting things in this changing world is the beautiful relationship between you and Parker. Mm. Jimmy, you have just set a hospital record. Four hours in surgery. Oh, no. I've been with Bradley in his room. We finished the operation a couple of hours ago. Well, you did, huh? Sure. Parker? Well, I thought... Uh, I mean, I assumed... Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I just remembered. I guess I'd better yeah. go up to the tenth floor and, well, uh, do something about something. Yeah. Do something for me while you're up there, will you? Jump off. Oh! <laughs> <sighs> I am so tired, I could sleep straight through 24 hours. Well, now, before you doze off, Jimmy, did we win or lose? Oh, can't be entirely certain for several days, but judging by the absence of shock and his physical response, we won. He'll live, I- I'm sure. Of it. Good, good, good. And congratulations, Jimmy. Why do they do it, Dr. Gillespie? Do what? What Bradley did, ignore the warnings and throw away their lives. He was lucky. Thousands of people aren't. Why does a chicken cross the road? It's the simplest rule in the world. Use your head and save your heart. Yet they go right on ignoring it. Always going to slow down and take it easy next year. Uh, next year never comes. Never. Well, what can you do except give them the facts and hope for the best? Oh. And, and, of course, treat them when they come into the hospital. Sure, but most of them wouldn't even have to go to a hospital if they'd only think. Uh, but now you're slipping over into the realm of human foibles, Jimmy. And to avoid a lengthy and unproductive discussion, I think maybe you better get some sleep. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I don't know, gentlemen. I suppose everybody's glad to leave a hospital. But I'm especially happy to be walking out instead of being carried. It's up to you from here on, Mr. Bradley. You can take it easy and live 20 years or more. Or go back to the same high-speed life in that third attack. Uh, Not me, Dr. Kildare. I've already made arrangements. I'm retiring to a little farm in Vermont. Vermont? Vermont. Oh, well, now, well, that's a very interesting. That's where I'm going when I retire. It's a great country, all right. Oh. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. You know, you can't really thank anyone for saving your life, so I'll just say goodbye. Goodbye, uh, goodbye. goodbye, goodbye. Uh, a farm in Vermont. Ah, that is the life, Jimmy farm in Vermont, raising flowers and vegetables. Ah, you wouldn't retire if you were 120 years old and you know it. Ah, next year, maybe, away from all this madhouse, nothing to worry about. Dr. Gillespie, I want... Well, Parker, what do you want? Well, it's these new hot water bottles. There's Ah. something wrong with them. Look, I filled this one with water and it bulges. Bulges, huh? Well, now, that's right down Kildare's alley. He's an authority on bulges. 
<laughs> you think you can graft a patch on it, Jimmy? Oh, let's see it, Parker. Yeah. Would you advise major surgery, Doctor? Oh, it's apparently defective, all right. No. Notice what happens when you squeeze it. Oh, that's nothing, Dr. Kildare. It's when you push on it here mm -hmm. that it really... Oh, good heavens. Confound it, Parker. What are you trying to do? Drown me? I didn't know it. <laughs> she it... didn't know it was loaded, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> Of all the nincompoops... Oh, in answer to your question a moment ago, I wouldn't advise surgery. No, no, the patient is just too far gone. Here's a towel. Ah. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Georgia Ellis, Wilms Herbert, and Vic Perrin. Dick Joy speaking.